Hey, Jason Fox here at Never Stop Building. Uh, I wanted to do a quick walkthrough video about this welding extension cord I'm going to make. Because I was looking on the internet and realized that it was going to be about $80 to $100 to get a 50 amp welding extension cord. Whereas I could build it for a little less. And also, I was at Home Depot anyway, picking up some parts to install a plug for my welder. So I figured I might as well just build it real quick, because they didn't have anything like it. Um, so if you want to do the same thing, uh, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to use this extra deep uh, double box here. A uh, exposed work cover. This is for a 4-inch box, and it has a 2 and... 2.14 inch hole in it because this uh, 50 amp this is a uh, 50 amp 250 volt I think it's a 650 is the uh, is the spec for this um, that's the outlet so that's gonna go in here and then on the other end is gonna be the 650 plug and the whole thing's going to get connected with some of this <clears throat> heavy duty uh, 6.3 cable, it's about 10 feet of that and then I'm going to connect it with these 3 quarter inch clamps with these uh, short guards to keep the clamps from messing up the wire so uh, let's get started putting it together. So based on the way my welding plug is, it's going to want to fit like this. So the cable's going to come in the top, and then the plug's going to fit here and then come out the bottom, um, which is good because these lugs to hold it in are in line with the uh, place that the wire is going to come in. So I won't have much have to lose much length connecting it like that. So now I'm going to hook it up to the front base and put in the wire clamp. Learning electrician stuff, the guy that taught me said always line up the screws. Uh, and the reason you do that is because, first of all, it looks good, and second of all, if anyone comes and messes around with your work, nine times out of ten, they're not going to put the screws back, so you know if someone's been where you've done some work. Alright, so I stripped the main sheath off of this wire, and then stripped about three-eighths of an inch off each of the conductors. And I cut the green one a little short, because as you see, when these go up into the right places, the green one will go in and these are going to have to go in their respective places. That way there will be very little wire inside and it will be a really solid connection. So according to these instructions for the plug, we're going to want the white wire to go to the larger slot, block to the smaller, and then ground to the, the ground. So that's going to that's gonna be right like this. So let's put it up. Now before I put this all together, I'm going to insert the wire through the clamp so that I don't have to push it back to the other end when I'm done with it. I can route it just nice. You don't have to go crazy with stripping the wire off because there's little buckets inside these. things that get pulled up and it cinches down on what little you have exposed, so it will be a solid connection. Also, don't be afraid to put a little torque on these bad boys because you don't want this coming loose. Now 
here on this clamp, I would say you also don't need to go too crazy because it's already pretty well attached to the plug itself and it's not really going anywhere. So you don't need to jam you know, lock this down so that it smushes the whole cable together. Because I've had, I've seen situations where you plug it in and then it just explodes the cable because it smashes the wires into each other. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. And the last thing we'll do is we'll test the continuity to make sure they're not shorts. Now this will uh, beep if there's any shorts in the wire. So these two don't, not to the housing, not to the housing, not to the ground, but they definitely short together. So that's good. And this I did the opposite, where I left the green long and the black and white short. And now these will go about like this. I realized, according to the diagram, I think it wants the black wire on the, on the wider. Which, uh, maybe I've gotten this wrong my entire life, but I always thought that you put the hot wire on the smaller one, because then you wouldn't be throwing like a you'd have less chance of putting something in the plug like that. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter because it's 240 volt, so you're gonna have hot on both of these. And it's just an extension cord, so as long as both both match the same wire, it's not gonna flip anything weird. Um, I'm gonna install it in the same way. Oops. Same way that I did here. So I'm gonna put the white on the big slot and the black on the small slot and the ground on the uh, ground thing. Now that I got the fingers, or whatever they're called, uh, screwed up to the ends of the wire, I'll just slip them in the appropriate connectors, or the, uh, the slots in the plug housing. Now that these are all in place, we'll start by screwing down this little clamp here. actually going to end up being better than the plug on the welder itself. That cord is a little thinner, but this will be good heavy duty for whatever purposes I need it. Nice and tight. And finally, put the back of the plug housing on the All right, there we go. And See that fits nice in its own housing. And of course, we'll check for any shorts. Check the ground. Good.